like so. Now, I'm gonna line those pieces up and I'm gonna kind of firmly work those two pieces in together. Again, I don't want to I don't want to pinch this so hard that I'm changing the thickness. So you got to have kind of a, a a firm but gentle touch. Now you can see I have some slip coming out here. I can just take my finger, kind of clean that up. You can play around with different things around the house that you could use to kind of clean that up. Again, don't take uh, a sponge with water and add a lot of water to this. The less water, the better. And then this side needs a little cleaning up. So I'm gonna use this. Just kind of clean that up. Now, right now, this looks pretty jankity. <laughs> um, and I don't, I don't, I literally do not know what I'm making. What am I making here? Let's say I'm making a phone stand. So I'm cleaning up that side. Oh. Let's do something fun here. So I've got that base. I'm gonna kind of pinch just the, the rims here to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. I don't wanna get this really thin. You guys are gonna to have to travel with these back and forth to school. Um, so you don't want to get anything too thin or have little spikes coming off um, because it's just not going to be strong enough to travel. Okay, so this looks okay. For a phone stand, I would probably slip and score um, something on here to, to hold the phone like so. Okay, so pretend like that's happening. Now, this is what I was talking about. This is like the basic sketch um, of what I'm going to be making. You have two options here. You could go put this in front of a fan on low to kind of speed up the drying process, or you could um, you know, just let it stay out in the air uh, while you go and watch a show or do another assignment, um, do your chores or whatnot, and then come back when it has set up a little bit and this is a little bit more firmer. Once it's more firmer, then I can go in and carve it, smooth out these sharp edges, um, stamp it, sign it, and then I'm ready to go, okay? Now really, as long as you know how to slip and score and you understand that clay has to be even, you're good to go. You can make anything hand building wise. Um, okay, I'm going to show you how you would roll a slab if you were in the studio. Okay, we're gonna go over here to the slab roller. Okay, the slab roller has these two dials right here and like measurements, if you look really closely, you wanna make sure that it's on the same thickness. So I'm double checking both to make sure it's on the same thickness. We um, have these amazing slab mats. Uh, there's one on the top and one on the bottom, okay? So before you start, you have to make sure you have these slab mats. You could also use canvas if slab mats were not available. I am going to flip over the top. I'm going to take my kind of patty here of clay. Again, this is wedged, no air. I'm going to flip that over. Kind of helps if you pull this so it gets closer to the bar here. Sometimes as you're pulling at the beginning, you have to pull tug on this to get it started. We roll it through. Flip it up, and then there's our slab of clay. If you're in the studio, this is how you would do it. Okay, I have made another pinch pot here, so now I have two pinch pots. And I wanna show you guys that you can, I'm gonna tap that a little bit to make the rim flat. I want those to be about the same size. I'm gonna slip and score it. Try to 
<clears throat> trying to press those together without it collapsing. So now we have a hollow ball. I'm gonna use the end of my spoon to kind of smooth that joint out. Use the back side of the spoon to make it even smoother. All right, now I have a hollow ball, which is pretty fun. Um, you could do tons of stuff with this. Again, this is just the first like sketch. This is just a beginning. Um, I would want to let this dry out, not dry out, get firmer in front of a fan or just out in the open air if you have more time, um, and then come back and you could carve in patterns, you could part carve in scenes, um, really whatever you want. You could even have put some little balls of clay inside here before you close it up and it would be a rattle. Um, you could just make a decorative piece. Lots of, different, lots of different things you could do. Now, if your ball remains all together, you do have to put a hole somewhere in it. And so, it doesn't have to be a big hole. This is actually gonna be a little bit bigger than I want, but because we, as this dries, it's gonna shrink and we want that air to be able to escape. So I'm gonna put a hole in here. Now that's kind of big. I can actually make that smaller so it's less noticeable. If you had a design, you could like, you know, put it in a, an area that you're not gonna be able to see it very much. So lots of different things with this. You could even take your, um, this guy, put a hole in it and like tap it on the surface and then you could have like a cute little flower vase or bud vase. So lots of different options, the sky's the limit. You guys now know how to make pinch pots, add them together, make something out of coil, slab at home and in the studio and slip and score. I'm gonna give these guys a little bit of a break and do some refinements. All right, you guys, you can also um, look around the house to find um, different things to use for texture. I want this to kind of look like clouds, so I'm just gonna use kind of the bottom of this. I'm pressing from this side and pushing it this on this side. You can find, um, if you have like fabric that has really cool texture on it, um, you know, the little plastic container that, that uh, the strawberries come in or the blueberries come in. You can find texture tools everywhere. So I kind of challenge you to start looking for some texture tools that you can use in your clay. And even with the stuff that you have in your box, the stick is now a great stamp. So play around and see what you can come up with. Let's talk about cleaning up. Um, of course, you wanna get all the clay off your tools. If you have really dry pieces of clay, that can just go right in the trash. Um, or you could like get a container for really dry stuff and add some water to it, and it'll go right back to workable clay. This stuff is still really wet, and I'm choosing not to use it. So I'm just gonna kinda of put it together and put it back in the baggie. Squeeze that air out of it. Close it up. And then I can use that later. Um, make sure though that you watch the wedging video and learn how to wedge um, before you use this piece of clay. Um, any little pieces, like I said, you can get a container for dry clay, um, or you can just put this in the trash. Remember, do not put this stuff, this clay, down the sink. Tidy up everything. Get things back organized, back in your box. Wash out your paintbrushes and start practicing good studio habits, even at home. Okay, I just wanna show you what I ended up with here. 
Here we have the phone stand. Um, I just took a sponge, damp sponge, not wet, like nothing was dripping out of it. Just kind of smooth things out, made sure I didn't have any sharp edges. We don't want sharp edges in, in ceramics. Worked on my craftsmanship and this is ready to go. Next up, here is our hollow ball. And I like the idea of a bud base. I kind of smoothed this out, but then I also liked that detail. Kind of thinks it looks like a rock or something more natural. I'm gonna take this bigger straw. You could also use a knife. I'm gonna hollow that out, or not hollow that out, poke a hole in it. Smooth it out on the inside. So it looks really nice. I'm gonna tap it on the table a couple times. And then what we have is this just really organic kind of bud base that would look awesome anywhere. So there you go. Your challenge is to take some or all of these techniques, make something at home and bring it back to the studio next class so we can get it fired and learn how to do surfaces.